Yeah, so and it's it. live. So people are coming in now. So you know, um, Kaios, would you like to uh, you know um, share your screen? Yes. So people are still um, coming in, so let's uh, let's wait for a bit. Right, so the number of um, attendees uh, has um, stabilized. So I think uh, you know people. You know, yes, um, three people have um, dropped out, and those three. People I'm clearly missing out on our last talk today. I feel sorry for them, but uh, nonetheless, you know, our third um, presentation of our session, uh, given by Caius um, Sine, um, Sine um, Maki from the, from the um, um, University of um, Helsinki. You know, um, a Finnish name based at the Finnish um, university. We can expect a Finnish topic. And indeed, variation in plural agreement in Finnish verbs, a corpus evidence for efficiency effects and animacy based noun classes. Thank you very much, Caius. Take it away. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear my voice? Probably you can. Yes, okay, good. So um, my background is in language typology, so I tend to provide typological uh, presentations, but this time is actually very peculiar to me, so I'm presenting on Finnish. And, um, but my attention to this phenomenon in, in Finnish grammar was, was actually uh, motivated quite a bit um, by my uh, typological work on, on gender and um, um, classifiers in the world's languages. But uh, so this talk is going to be about variation in plural agreement in Finnish verbs. So as a background, verbs in spoken Finnish agree with the subject in person and number. Um, but in third person, plural subjects do not always trigger plural agreement on the verb. So we can, so the general pattern is that uh, with plural subjects like lapset, children, or he, ne, which are uh, third person plural pronouns like they, that the verb occurs in plural form. So lapset, syövät. But the verb can also occur in singular form. So lapset or he, ne, su. So there is this variation uh, that uh, with plural subjects, the verb sometimes occurs in plural form, sometimes in singular form. In written Finnish, the plural agreement is obligatory since, since um, um, the development of the written language in, in uh, the 16th century but spoken Finnish is different. Now, this variation in number agreement has received quite remarkable attention in Finnish linguistics in early research. And based on this research, there is uh, at least some evidence that um, these different factors may affect um, the uh, variation in number agreements. So speakers gender in the sense that women uh, may use the, the plural agreement more than men. Speakers age in the sense that older speakers may use the number agreements more than younger speakers. Then the dialect, the, the plural agreement is much more frequent in particular dialect regions, particularly in the southwest, southeast and north of Finland. Then the verb lemma uh, affects it also so that copula is often um, well, the copula is often not used with the plural agreement, but with the singular form, although the subject is in plural. Then polarity number agreement is less frequent in under negation. Uh, word order affects also that number agreement is more frequent when subject is pre-verbal, so subject verb order. Dependency length seems to affect also so that number agreement or this plural plural uh, agreement is more frequent when the subject is far removed from the verb and then animacy there seems to be some um, evidence also that the plural agreement is more frequent with animate subjects compared to inanimate subjects now one of the things uh, 
that is also peculiar of this research is that it's quite scattered and the rel relative effect of these different factors has not been evaluated by bringing them together and being evaluated together um, by using uh, corpus methods. In addition, especially when thinking about um, um, whether animacy has an effect, whether the animacy of the subject has an effect on, on uh, this agree agreement. Uh, this variation has not been discussed in the light of typological research on agreement classes. So one of the basic issues is that if agreement varies systematically according to the properties of the triggering noun, in typological literature, this is definitionally a matter of noun classes or grammatical gender. But then on the other hand, no Uralic language has been reported to having noun classes or gender. So this is this has been an, an interest to me that is, is there any evidence for animacy based agreement classes in Finnish? So let's see. So our aim is to evaluate the relative strength of some selected factors affecting variation in plural agreement using variationist corpus approach. So in this research, we, we just select a few, uh, few factors, but we are, um, I'm hoping to uh, extend this to other factors in the future also. We delimit the work to finite affirmative clauses in which the subject is pre-verbal. So uh, when the subject is post-verbal, we exclude those and negative clauses are also excluded and subordinate clauses also. And in this particular presentation, I focus on clauses that contain a third person plural subject pronoun, he or ne. Uh, one of the facts, factors that interests me in these pronouns is that at least part of the semantic pragmatic difference between these pronouns is related to animacy. So the pronoun he is used more often with human reference and ne with non-human reference or just as a general third person pronoun, at least in, in several different dialect regions. But regardless of the exact semantic pragmatic difference between these pronouns, um, it's, it's um, still possible that their usage may have differentiated according to the number agreement. So the data comes from the Finnish dialect syntax archive, uh, which is openly available. And this archive contains recorded spoken narratives from more than 100 part participants between, um, well, recorded between the 1960s and uh, 50s and 70s. The participants' median year of birth is 1884. So the data mostly represents Finnish dialects as learned at the end of the 19th century. Uh, the interviewees were selected to represent the local dialect. So, um, so if they were using some other forms, they were probably uh, excluded. So in a sense, this is not very typical of variation in sociolinguistic data, but I, I think we can still treat, treat it here viably as a source for historical sociolinguistic research. So this uh, Finnish dialect syntax archive data is very well annotated, so it contains much data on the speakers, so their age, gender, municipality, dialect areas, and, and so on and then much information about the grammatical um, properties of each word, like the lemma part of speech and all inflectional categories. The data that we um, uh, sampled for, for this research contains uh, roughly 9,000 clauses. And we modeled the occurrence of plural agreement with generalized dynamics effects modeling, and we use as predictors uh, two sociolinguistic variables, so speaker's age and speaker's gender, both come directly from the corpus. And then uh, two grammatical variables, the subject type, so whether pronoun he or ne is used, and this again comes directly from the corpus. And then dependency length, which we part partly manually analyze and limited, limited this to clauses where uh, um, zero to four words occur between the subject and the, and the verb. And then we uh, model random intercepts, so the verb lemma as a random intercept, and then the speaker embedded in dialect region 
embedded in Dalek area, also used as random intercept. And then we also build our model additively to evaluate goodness of fit with archaic information criterion. So just some descriptive results first. Um, the we can see already from, from these descriptive results that the singular form, verb form is much more frequent than the plural form. And then the, as for the subject pronouns, the ne pronoun occurs about 95% of the time and the he pronoun only about 5% of the time. And remember the he pronoun refers to humans and ne is sort of uh, general or referring to, to uh, in, inanimate or to non-humans. About 50% of the data was produced by male, 50% by female, average age was about eight years. And uh, among the verbs, the copula dominates a lot. When we cross tabulate uh, the pronoun and agreement, we can see that the plural agreement occurs in about 25% of the cases uh, for the net pro uh, pronoun, but for the head pronoun, it's it's close to 50 persons so there is quite quite a strong difference there between how much plural uh, agreement is used within a pronoun compared to the head pronoun when just uh, cross tabulating these these two then let's look at the results from the modeling so uh, speakers age and gender had no significant effects on plural agreement but dependency length and subject pronoun did so in terms of dependency length, each intervening word between the subject and the verb increased the probability of plural agreement about 1.8 times. So, so if we think about um, if there are four words between the subject and the verb, then that increases the probability of plural agreement already um, something like seven, almost eight times. Then for the subject pronoun, plural agreements was about two times more likely with the pronoun he compared to the pronoun ne. As for the uh, explanatory power, the, uh, the marginal uh, R squared was fairly small, small. The conditional R2 R squared was uh, fairly large. So it seems that much of the variation uh, in this data is explained by um, the random structure, and let's let's see about that in a minute. But first, uh, just the uh, marginal effect plot of the dependency length. So we can see that the predicted probability of plural agreement is about twenty percent when the subject and the verb are adjacent to one another, but the predicted probability of the plural ag agreement increases. Um, up to something like 70% when there are four words between subject and verb. And then the predicted probability of plural agreement is about 20% with the pronoun ne, but with the pronoun he, it's, it's uh, already closer to 40%. This map represents uh, the um, random intercepts for dialects. So the propensity for plural agreement varies quite a bit across dialect regions, being the greatest in southwest Finland and then south east Finland and north Finland, and being the smallest in west and central Finland, where where uh, plural agreement is not used that often at all. So then um, building the model additively, we started with just the uh, model containing the intercept and then added the random effects um, and then added the, the predictors. So adding the random terms decreases the archaic information um, quite drastically, but the predictors, especially dependency, um, dependency length and, and the pronoun type also decrease archaic information quite a bit. So archaic information criterion, if it's um, the reduction is greater than 10, then uh, that's a very good um, sign for um, 
that the predictor is is meaningful. Okay, so up until now I have been talking about um, pronoun subjects, but uh, how about lexical subjects then? So uh, we did a small pilot analysis of roughly 200 randomly selected clauses that contain plural lexical subjects and analyzed the nouns in terms of animacy. The pre preliminary results suggest that plural agreement is roughly three times more likely with animates or human nouns compared to inanimate nouns. So with an inanimate nouns, the plural um, agreement occurs in about 20% of the cases and in animate and human nouns in about uh, 35 to 40 40 percent of the cases so this is a pilot analysis but we are extending this now to the to the whole corpus in in ongoing research so a few points for discussion so the results seem to suggest that the further the preverbal plural subject pronoun is from the verb, the more likely there is plural agreement on the verb. And we suggest that this relationship between dependency length and morphological marking can be explained in terms of efficiency. Um, namely, that the further the subject is from the verb, the more difficult it is to infer that this dependency relation between the subject and the verb without any morphological marking of, of this relation. This relationship between dependency length and morphological marking, I think it's quite expected in terms of what we know from, from um, uh, um, in, in terms of economy, especially as a motiv functional motivation. But uh, it appears to me also that this is actually not very often explicitly reported with corpus data. Then uh, the other issue, um, Sorry, um, just checking. No, I'm not checking the chat. It, it's gone already. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but um, Keith, is there five five minutes or one minute? Three minutes left. Three, Three minutes. minutes. Okay, thanks. That's enough. So according to the results, uh, plural agreement is also more likely with the pronoun he. So with the pronoun referring to um, uh, human reference compared to the pronoun ne. And coupled with the pilot data on lexical subjects, we believe this result provides uh, initial statistical evidence for animacy-based noun classes in Finnish, not in terms of categorical um, noun classes, but more like um, sort of soft, soft constraint type of, of uh, phenomenon. And, and like I mentioned, we are currently analyzing plural lexical subjects in, in the whole corpus, uh, uh, about 4,000 4, cases. So this effect of the subject type on plural agreement is a sign that variation in plural agreement has been recruited for expressing animacy-based distinctions of the subject referent, that is to expressing noun classes. And this is highly interesting because no Uralic language has earlier been reported to having, having noun classes even of the of this kind of soft constraint type just a few words about the the um the history of this phenomenon so plural agreement is obligatory in standard finnish and in early written finnish um uh, plural agreements was already um obligatory but it's, it's important to note that early written Finnish was based on the Southwestern dialects already since the 16th century. And in this particular uh, region, plural agreement is prominent. There is also some evidence that plural agreement is less frequent in young people's speech compared to that, that of the older people. But this may again be just some kind of uh, anti-standard behavior. The young, younger people are, um, uh, speaking in a way that doesn't reflect um, standard uh, language use. So more research is needed to determine whether plural agreement in third person is being lost more consistently um, across age groups and um, um, dialects or whether what what is what what is going on there. So it's actually difficult to tell difficult to tell whether animacy based distinction is plural agreement is historically a recent phenomenon in Finnish dialects or whether 
it was present in Finnish dialects, let's say already in the 16th century when, when the uh, writing system was developed. Now, it's still debated why noun classes emerge in languages in the first place. But we could say that since animacy is the most basic distinction in this in noun class systems, the grammaticalization of anim animacy based noun classes in Finnish offers valuable data for observing how these systems emerge from existing variation in agreements. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much. Um, we have slightly less than um, 10 minutes for um, a Q&A, but uh, here we are. So if you have um, any questions for Akaios, you know, please um, write them in and I shall um, read them out for Akaios. And, uh, you know, can I just you know, thank Akaios for a very fascinating um, talk on his native um, language, which is um, much more complex than I... Uh, Yeah, so there's a question from um, Keanu, um, who's asking, is there um, a possibility that you know, he, either your hair and there, may be um, evolving to mirror the uh, distinction between Han and Se? Uh, oh, yes. Um, so I, I didn't show you the whole uh, pronoun paradigm of Finnish. So obviously, the plural pronoun he is analogous to the singular pronoun han and then the plural pronoun ne is analogous to, to the singular pronoun se so so they are they are uh, analogous in that way yes any other questions and yes i know i noticed that um uh, some participants are asking for the slides, so we can actually share a link here. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your um, your um, your link to your slides. Any other questions? Yes, but having the um, Q&A question that has been uh, answered um, already. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, yeah, so uh, um, there's a query from um, Ryan. Ryan Lai, if Ryan could write down his uh, question. So that I can uh, um, read out to, um, um, to um, Caius. Yes, Ryan asks, you know, do, uh, do the two pronouns um, encode a similar level of accessibility? So accessibility in terms of information structure, I presume. Um, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> That's a very simple and very short answer. <laughs> I My assumption is that yes, but I can't tell more. Got about four minutes left for um, um Q and Yes, so you know, there's a question from um, um Cynthia. You know, she was saying that you know, uh, fascinating. Uh, thank you. Uh, she's been working on agreement of variation in English, and it's striking to her how similar the patterns in Finnish are. Animacy effects appear on agreement of variation with conjoined subjects in English. For example, you know, more plural with uh, you know the mother and son than with you know, the apple and orange. Does this kind of cross language family parallel complicate you know, your story about your man classes? It seems like it points to something bigger about animacy and conceptual number being um, reflected on verbs. Thank you. This is a very, very, very good question. I, I, um, I'm very glad you drew, drew, my, drew my attention to this. Um, I've recently also learned that a little bit similar pattern is going on in Turkish and Persian. And... Um, <laughs> Definitely in some other languages also, um, plural agreement occurs only with animate or human subjects, but not with inanimate ones, or it's, it's uh, maybe optional or something like that. So it's, it's actually quite likely, I would say, or at least very interesting to look at whether there is anything um, um, more general going on here.
in terms of animacy and, and uh, plural agreements on verbs. And Ryan would like to ask, so, you know, if that might underpin the difference, uh, if there is a difference in the accessibility. Hmm. Well, I could maybe turn this into, um, if we think about plural marking on nouns, plural marking on nouns in many languages can also be limited to just animate nouns. So uh, this coupling of animacy and, and number, it seems that there's actually more going on there. So uh, whether it's related to accessibility, I can't really tell. Um, we should probably do some experimental research on that to really answer that properly. But this coupling of number and animacy, this seems to be more general phenomenon. What about um, two minutes left for um, Q and A? So any more questions that um, we can have? If I can ask a very short um um, um question, um, um Matthias, I mean, you know, um, yeah, um, you know, um, I don't speak Finnish um at all, which is uh, you know, I'm quite shameful of me, but you know, um, I would uh, as um, as far as I know, you know, Finnish has many um, morphological um, um cases, yeah. If, uh, sure. Finnish Finnish is one of the most famous um, examples of you know um, morphological um, um cases. Um, how does that do tie in with your um analysis? Because I mean, if there's you know, if there are lots of um, cases, how have you analyzed um these cases in your um corpus? Is your corpus um um a POS tag? And yes, the corpus is is fully tagged for POS and all the grammatical categories, so it would be uh, possible to uh, track cases also. Um, we didn't pay any, any attention to cases. Uh, the subjects are marked in nominative case. So um, in that sense, we paid attention to case in order to find, um, um, to recognize subjects from, from uh, the corpus. But otherwise, we didn't pay any attention to cases. Yeah, however, you know, do animates of objects have a special uh, morphological ending? So, no, you know, uh, no. Yeah. There, there's a split in the system. Um, so we have partitive case for some some um, objects and then this uh, sort of genitive accusative case for some objects. And then, um, but that, that variation occurs in the singular number, but then in plural number, uh, there's variation between partitive and uh, nominative. So, and um, then in pro, pro, pronouns, there's a three-way distinction in, in objects. So it's, it's, it's split in multiple ways, but not in terms of animacy. So, you know, um, morphological case um, distinctions, you, you reckon, don't really feature in your analysis of looking at subjects, yeah? Nope. Sure, I understand. So, you know, that's, uh, that's interesting. You can leave out so all 15 uh, morphological um, 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 cases, as pointed out by um, 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 Keanu. So that's, um, that's, uh, that simplifies um, the analysis um, quite a lot, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, we've got one minute left for questions. So if anyone has any questions, uh, do get them out now. I think you know, we've overrun slightly due to you know, the um, you know um, um, the um, 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 due to the um, um, re, re logging in. So I think we've uh, we've run over. So um, I'm now actually over the um, the um, time slot. So uh, we may have to you know close a little bit um, early. But you know um, there's still you know less than a minute left. If anyone wants to make some really quick comments, really a uh, really quick question. So anything else? If nothing else, I think we should uh, close this session now. So, okay, so thank you again to um, Caius and, all, and to all the um, um, presenters of this particular session. I'm sure that we all love um, grammatical lyization. And you know, um, in this particular session, we've learned a lot more about it and the um, thing um, that we love. And I hope that you know, our love for this topic only gets you know, stronger by the day. And if there's any chance that we can, uh, you know, um, hang out during the um, annual meetings, uh, let's do so. But for the time being, that's the end of, uh, of this particular session. So thank you very much. It's been an, um, an experience of a lifetime. Thank you, Caius, and everyone else. Thank you. Thank you.
you at our next session, which I believe is the plenary um, presentation. See you then.